Welcome to the Mind Mill Podcast, where host Seth Marcus dissects and discusses all things impacting young adults. Peers, mentors, and professionals share intimate conversations on subjects such as entrepreneurship, exercise and health, music and art, the blessings and curses of technology, travel, and how to navigate adulthood in this age of information. We are the largest generation in history, and we dictate the future. The Mind Mill. Find your purpose, fuel your purpose. Hey guys, before we start today's episode, I wanted to fill you in on my newest product, the Mind Mill Booklet. Over the past years, my life has been transformed by my writing practice. I use a daily journal and digital note-taking apps to organize my life, pursue my goals, and hold myself accountable. However, my absolute most essential writing platform has always been my pocketbook. It's my mind's inbox, where I collect ideas, build lists, and capture notes from conversations. I love it because there are never any distractions, and it keeps me off my phone. For years, I used a simple blank notebook before realizing I could do this better. I wanted my daily pocketbook to have the sections we use every day. Shopping lists, things to research later, favorite quotes, habit tracking, and etc. So I created it. The MIMO booklet is designed to be your catch-all for creativity and productivity. It's packed with useful and intuitive note templates, easy navigation, inspiring art, and powerful quotes. I keep mine in my back pocket every day. It's truly a game changer. The best part about it is that it keeps me productive and in my mind rather than on my phone. So pick yourself up a booklet, join the ever-growing community of writers, support the Mind Mill, and improve your focus by putting pen to paper. Go to themindmill.com for more details, one hell of a podcast, and all Mind Mill updates. Today is the second episode of the Habit Hacking series here on the Mind Mill podcast. Early in 2019, the Mind Mill teamed up with an event to promote the understanding, impact, dissection, and mastering of our personal habits. The summit, Habit Hackers, was a massive success, bringing hundreds together to learn from top performers, entrepreneurs, Super Bowl champions, and elite coaches. The day-long summit was packed with presenters and workshops to aid in mastering routines that shape our lives. I had the pleasure of interviewing the creator, David Blutenthal, on the podcast to discuss the inspiration for Habit Hackers. We also dove into our own trials and tribulations surrounding our own personal habits. A great episode, and be sure to go back and give it a listen or a refresher. David is expanding Habit Hackers this year with a series of mini workshops before the next big summit in early 2020. These workshops will give people hands-on opportunities to tackle their habits in different areas of their life with accountability and social support. Whether you desire to transform your personal finance habits, create more effective communication, or build new structures for your health and fitness, you'll find something to take on these workshops. You can find more information on all things Habit Hackers at www.habithackers.co. This episode is with Habit Hackers presenter, Emily Schramm. Emily Schramm is a personal trainer, nutritional therapy practitioner, and serial entrepreneur, helping others empower themselves by way of food and movement. Running online programs at emilyschramm.com, her other ventures include her backpack turned weight training invention, The Impact, her podcast, The Meathead Hippie, an herbal tea line, Element Tea, and her newest venture, a 24 7 access strength gym right in Rhino, Denver, called Platform Strength. Emily's story is out of this world, a testament as to where a positive and determined attitude can direct your life. Her career springboarded following an appearance on an MTV challenge. She harnessed that momentum to build a personal brand, multiple successful companies, and a platform where she leads a community focused on mental and physical wellness. She's one of the busiest humans I've ever met, and I was so glad to share some time with her to hear her story. In this episode, we discuss daily routines, the power of team building and trust, having the courage to leap for your success, and the future of wellness in our global community. A quick note before we start the show, this episode almost didn't make it. Any musician or podcast can tell you about the nightmare of data loss. Without going into all the details, I had to go above and beyond to recover this episode's audio. Unfortunately, the last 30 seconds of the interview were lost, and I apologize for the abrupt ending. I'm excited to share episode two of the Habit Hacking series with Emily Schramm. Well, Emily Schramm, welcome to the Mind Mill Podcast. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really glad we got together today. We were doing a lot of scheduling and figuring out a good time frame for us to meet together. And as throughout that process, I was also doing a little bit of research into all the things you do. And I realized how difficult it is 
to book you. <laughs> I know. So I, I appreciate just a little bit of time with you. It's all my own fault how much I slam my schedule. So sometimes I really regret it. But at the same time, I have to stay busy. So it's, you know, one of those things you create things, you stay busy, and then you realize the things you want to do the most, which is sit down and talk with people have gotten shoved out the window. So it's my pleasure to sit down and talk. I couldn't feel more the same way. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I started the podcast. We were talking about it just a few minutes ago that we are so busy and it's great to just sit down and actually have a conversation that doesn't involve, you know, cell phones or, or interruptions or big agendas. You know, this how is, this often, is what we'll talk about for the next minutes. And this how will be often our... do we do that? Right. It's mm -hmm. so crazy is that, you know, we all are trying to make a brand or trying to be more productive, whether it's in your own company or in someone else's company that you work for. And yet all the things that are coming at us are through technology. They're through, IT and it's a beautiful thing, but it's also, it just takes us so far away from who we are because we're just covered with apps and all these tasks that can make us more productive. But at the end of the day, what did we do that just made us feel like ourselves? And I think that's where everything that I love to do comes in, but it's something I still struggle with. I mean, I love to do it because it's my own battle every day. Like, oh, end of day, what did I do today <laughs> that made me like really connect with someone or made me feel really happy or brought me a lot of joy. And we tend to let those things slip first when we look at the things that we're doing at the end of the day, what actually had those moments of joy in us and we just don't do them anymore. Yeah. The balance of the, the task list of what other people are asking us to do, of what the beds that we made, the goals that we have for our business or businesses and what needs to be done versus what really fills us up and connects us. One of the main reasons that I, I love doing this podcast is that it, like my business is connecting with people mm. and it's, and I know you share that too. It's interesting too, because all of us are figuring out, you know, we have such passion and purpose when we start something. So intentions are pure and we're excited and we still are right. But when everything that comes with business also gets jumbled in that, that's where the struggle begins. And so communicating with your team and logistics and scheduling and all these things we don't really talk about as much as we probably should about how they get in the way of actually doing what we're doing. We just are so attached to it because it's our passion and it's our purpose and we'll do it no matter what. But then we have to look at the end of the day, like how much is going where? And so if we started our company or if we started our business because we wanted authenticity, we wanted to not work for the man and we wanted mm -hmm. freedom, we end up just kind of, if we don't pay attention to it, soon shooting ourselves in our own foot and we become the man, right? We become exactly what we ran away from. And so it's this constant back and forth between passion and purpose and really loving what you do, but also knowing how to do it in a way that you don't forget why you started. And that's something I always will balance every single day. Yeah. Like the 30,000 foot view, mm -hmm. somehow taking time to step back and see, you know, is this still true to the message, the mission that I started this thing off with? And after looking into all the projects that you do, it seems like there is this current theme that runs through your projects that is, you know, the Emily Schramm theme throughout all of it. I'm wondering, you've got your hands in so many different projects. What are you really excited about right now? Oh, that's a great question. I think for me, I am always going to be excited about creating and I'm always going to be excited about solving a problem for myself, but also for the clients that come to me every single day. And I had no desire to run more than one company. I didn't even know I'd be a business owner 10 years ago. You know, I was kind of on this track of going to do X, Y, Z, and I was going to be a veterinarian of all things. And so mm. it's so crazy when people are like, have you always been like this? This is what you've always wanted to do. Absolutely not. I had no clue and no intention that this would be my business. This would be what I am creating, but also it just makes perfect sense because you just start listening to your clients. You start listening to what the needs are. You start listening to the gaps in the industry and you can find holes that are huge and gaping and you can help fill that hole. So it fulfills your client's needs, but it also is the most purposeful action because you are now creating something that's not for money. It's not for worth. It's not for ego. It's just, it is what it is. And that's what I'm always really excited about. Where can I find holes and gaps and where can I fill in that space that has such purpose behind it? And 
someone's going to benefit from it in a really beautiful way. And that's what always excites me is seeing something that maybe the client has done all the meal plans or all the different workout programs, and they're just jumping from one to the other to the next. And so helping them explain to themselves, helping them learn for themselves would actually resonate. And that could be in different ways, right? So that sometimes it's the herbal tea. Sometimes it's teaching them how herbal medicine might help. Sometimes it's teaching them how to work out and not be at the gym for two hours, but being outside and getting barefoot and exploring nature the way it's supposed to. And sometimes it's giving them more more education that they can listen to. And so it's just different areas that how can I help this person understand that they have all the tools inside? I just want to help them open that door for themselves. And so that's always going to be whatever product it is, whatever business it is, that's truly like the theme of it. What can I give them that makes them realize they already have it? They just need to tap into it. Yeah. The providing value to everyone. And you have a very adept version viewing things to see, to find that gap that I think is very rare in a lot of business people. People start off with seeing something, oh, there's a a market for this. There's money to be made if we can do it this way. But it seems that more and more, you kind of see the money as this kind of, um, it, it just is what it is. It's not good or bad. It's a very neutral currency. And by providing value, you create abundance around it. And people come to that because they see through the the money making schemes and they want they want to share the value that you're providing. They want authenticity, right? And more and more people can see through it. And I think that's why I am so lucky to be in this position because I am the consumer I want. I have seen so much ugly, icky, whether they're MLMs or whether they're supplement companies or whether they're just horrible, shitty workout routines, you know, whatever it is, I've actually tried it and purchased it. I was that consumer desperate for something and did everything possible because I just was one running away from myself, running away from the deep issues of just not feeling good enough. And I also was just looking for answers for anybody to teach me something. And so I feel really lucky that I'm in this position where I saw the the good, the bad, the ugly. And then now I can say, well, if I would not feel comfortable getting this email, I'm not going to send it. If this feels too salesy, if this feels too, you know, and sometimes it's to a fault. There's some times where I'm like, you know, it's okay yeah. to do it, you know, leaving an opportunity out there for sure. Mm-hmm. And, but there's a way to do it. That's really authentic and really beautiful. And sometimes it's slower and sometimes it's not as scalable as quickly as we want it to be, but it's also so genuine that the audience that I've captured over the last seven years of me doing this, they're the people I want to be in a room with and hug and cry with and be best friends with. And so to me, finally seeing that this year and the last year of like, wow, every time I didn't take the shortcut and every time I said no to something that was a little bit me, but not completely me, it paid off. And so that's my biggest piece of if anyone's starting off or if anyone's frustrated about the lack of progress, it's like, I am the most impatient person and finally realizing how much patience pays off is a really important thing. And I have to remind myself every day, (laughs) but it's been a big epiphany that I've had. Yeah. How do you remind yourself Mm. for patience? You know, like we're getting into some of the habits and routine side of things, but it is so hard, especially the Instagram culture, right? Everybody wants immediate feedback and they want to be satisfied with every click. How do you balance patience with that? Oh, that's a great question. I think it really is one of my, every night it's either a bath or a really, really hot shower. And I literally go through a checklist. That's my one big routine that I have to do because you never feel like it's enough. No matter what your schedule is, you're going to be like, what did I do today? Or you're so on a mission that you're never in the moment because you're just go, 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 go. And there's days that will happen. I mean, we can't pretend that we can meditate out of that. That's just how it is as a business owner. But what we can do is say at some point in the night before I go to bed, I have to finally recognize how much I did. If it was two things, if it was 10 things. And so I just kind of go through my calendar day, like literally washing my hair, being like, all right, started this morning and I had a podcast and it was really great. And that was my, and I literally have this whole dialogue with myself and I talk about the problems. I talk out like, okay, that was a good meeting. And this, and all of a sudden I'm like, damn, Emily, you did a lot today. And it gives me this sense of completion that I never used to have because it was always, oh, I didn't do enough. Oh my God. 
Mm-hmm. I have so much left to do. Yep. I have to write this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And you just have emptiness at the end of the day. And so it's I'm not very good at like, here's a list of gratitude piece. You know, I can do that for sure. And it does help when I really am struggling writing down things that make me feel good. But I think more so than that, it's letting the gratitude come out by just going through that internal dialogue of what happened that day. Mm-hmm. What about in the mornings? How do you get yourself ready for these epic days that you seem to uh, stack one on top of each other? Yeah. So I have been through the loop with mornings. It's so funny because when I started off as a personal trainer back in the Globo gym days and, you know, first starting my own business, it's been about eight and a half years. It was early, early mornings for years. Sure. You know? So as Try many, to get as many early clients in before workday starts. For sure. 5 a.m.s and 6 a.m.s, Monday through Friday. And it took me a long time to come back to terms with mornings because I was so resistant because it was such a duty. And I felt so privileged that I was able to build a business that no longer forced me to do those early mornings. So I finally had come to terms with within the last year. All right. I feel like I got that out of my system. I have to do something in the morning because all I'm doing is going straight to my emails and I'm just the most productive in the morning. So I love capitalizing on it. And it was such a hard habit to break because I felt like if I didn't do those emails in the morning, I never would catch up. But I have finally come to terms with, I would rather not catch up and start my mornings with just me. And so I am, I don't know how hippie you think I am, but I'm about to tell you. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I have just this really fun little area in my house And it's just like my total stretch, light a candle, burn Palo Santo and do tarot cards. And I just kind of get into this place of, I just visualize, what am I going to do today? How's it going to feel? What do I want to accomplish? What do I want to feel like during this interview? What do I want to get out of the podcast or the program or whatever it is? Like, what do I want other people to feel? And so it's never really actions. It's just this kind of thinking how do I want to feel? I think that's really what it is. And so when I recognize that, and sometimes I don't feel that way, it's never a foolproof solution, Sure. but at least I feel more prepared when I jump into it. And like I said, if I don't do my emails in the morning, I really don't catch up, but I've actually become a better person and a better boss because of that morning, because of that, if nothing else, at least I stepped into myself and felt like I could take care of myself for five minutes before the day began. Is that a every morning ritual? Yeah. And I go to the mountains as soon as I can on the weekends. So that's really my okay. rehab. Yeah. <laughs> that's really my mental sanity is being in the mountains. But if I am in Denver and in the city, that's my kind of connection for sure. Mm-hmm. I think it's so important to be proactive before we're reactive. One of the things I struggle with is, you know, my alarm clock is on my phone. So when I go to turn off my alarm, first thing I'm holding, you know, when I'm, when I'm kind of like mentally weakest too, you know, groggy, cold, dehydrated, all these things, I have, you know, my biggest distraction tool in my hand right now. So something that I am really conscious of is turning off the alarm and then instead of going back to bed, you know, going to, for me, it's usually my yoga mat first to kind of stretch out and then to like a meditation bolster. I have a little corner in my area too. I, I've never quite gotten into the tarot, but I've definitely been gotten a reading before and, and, you know, I enjoy the process, but I don't understand much about it. You know, it's so interesting. It is what you make it, right? So there's Oracle cards and there's tarot cards and, you know, full tarot. I say this in the best way. It can be really witchy, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I am all for the witchy, but I also think (laughs) that I don't want to start every day that way. So it's really this kind of good reminder of the things you already know. If you're really just feeling stuck with business stuff, I mean, I, I pull them before business meetings. I make my coaches pull them before we have our team meetings. It's just a way to feel grounded for me and I can see the effect on other people too. So it's just saying, all right, this is a message that I'm maybe not listening to myself or I know exists, but I'm not a crazy person because it exists. I'm not crazy because I have these thoughts and these feelings. And that's really our society. We just all feel crazy and it's how willing we are to talk about it. It's not crazy. It's normal, but we've turned it into this word of crazy and in our head and overthinking. That's everybody. It's yeah. just how willing are we to just say it out loud and then also take tools to help us not feel so in our head, not be so flighty, kind of bringing us down. So yeah. that's something that's been helpful for me. Sure. It's also a conscious way to ingest some other wisdom that's outside of your own mental dialogue or your mental monologue, Mm -hmm. right? You know, we're talking to ourselves all the time and it's kind of the most important 
uh, communication we have in our lives is what we say to ourselves in our own mental chatter, whether it won't shut up or it's saying negative things or positive things. It's nice to get something that is um, maybe positive, maybe reflective, maybe it's a neutral statement, but it, it shifts our mindset a bit. I've got a stoicism book that's based off of um, the meditations of Marcus Aurelius that is kind of my go-to, where I'll just kind of turn to a page and just read something that will kind of kind of put some stuff in perspective. That's a great way of saying it because I think the more I grow with these companies, the more I realize that I am simply the channel for them to exist. I feel like so many times we can let ego get in a way of purpose. There is some ego that's needed as a business owner to some degree, right? You have to feel completely confident. You have to sell the shit out of your product. You have to show up in a way that is hard to show up unless you have some ego. So I'm not saying it's all bad, but what I've found is that when we finally put that aside and push it aside and realize that I just got lucky enough to be the one that created it, it helps me realize, like you said, how much bigger there is. There's so much big out there. And for us to feel a little bit smaller is a really good thing. For us to feel a little less in control of everything, knowing that things are still taken care of. And I'm not a religious person. So it's very strange for me to even say these things. But it's if we can understand that we're just one method to get people the message that you want to get. I think that's where it's like, okay, you're just doing the work. You just show up. You have a heart full of love and happiness and gratitude and everything will be okay. Everything Mm -hmm. has worked out so far. So the stress you feel, the anxiety you feel, the confusion you feel, all of that is self-made and there's nothing to worry about. And that's just the battle. Like you said, it's getting out of our own head. Right. You say you're you're not a religious person and I would tend to identify myself as the same. But recently in the last few years, especially the spirituality has come into it a bit more into my life. So I think People tend to not want to be religious because it puts a label. If you say, I am a religious person, then the follow-up question is obviously, well, what religion? And as we get into this age of information and this mindfulness movement, we all feel this this gap of, you know, I'm achieving my physical goals, my business goals, my mental goals, my relationship goals, my personal goals, but there is this other entity of spirituality that is in a lot of ways the most important, you know, because it gives us this purpose. It gives us this fuel that will propel us and kind of keep us on our North Star, right? It'll keep us looking up and being like, this is why I'm doing it. You know, we battle with ego, but you're, I think you're, you're dead on with the purpose of it and finding your mission and sticking with it, knowing that it takes tenacity and direction and discipline in order to achieve this goal that you know is going to help yourself, your team, and everyone that you service. I think mindfulness and this movement of mindfulness came, it's necessity, right? It's so fun to watch ebbs and flows of culture, society. And for us, especially right now, if we're in a day and age where people are building their own business and building their own brand and being more accessible on the internet, the fact that mindfulness is such a huge thing right now is no coincidence. It's this very unique place where it's either you're all in on this full build your business, Gary V style, film everything, be connected, connected, connected. And I think on the flip side, we have just be in your own body and it's mixed messages. It's two polar opposites. And so I think it's a really beautiful opportunity for those who are aware and looking and searching to combine the two in a way that works for them. Yeah. It all boils down to balance, right? You've got to be a little bit outside of your comfort zone because that's where the growth happens. Mm -hmm. You also have to remember what really fills you up and what is it that makes you, you. Yeah. Balance is a hard word for me because I'm such an extreme person. So I'm all in or all out. And so what I've found is that instead of seeing it day-to-day balance, it's kind of the analogy of somebody that's um, counting their macros. They're doing their food and counting their macronutrients. They aren't going to have every plate perfect. But at the end of the day, did they hit the right macros? Maybe their breakfast was higher fat and then their dinner was higher carb. Mm -hmm. It's this kind of overall mean, right? We're looking at the median. And so I say that month to month. For my month, how many days did I have full productive, all in, oh shit, like, full force. And how many days did I just chill? And so at the end of the month, if I'm seeing this, or even at the end of the week, whatever works, you can really quickly see the out of balance and the burnout when it's about to happen, because it's just like, 
peak, 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 peak. Oh, I maybe took a day off. And all of a sudden, why am I so tired? Why do I feel like I'm, you know, I don't have any new ideas and I feel stuck and I'm in a rut and I have anxiety about that. Well, because we just did way too much. And so balance is more a bigger vision instead of just saying day to day. And I wish I could be that person that had day to day balance. I just am never going to be that person. I, so I, I love seeing it from a little bit one step back of saying, okay, Monday, Tuesday, full on full crush. It was awesome. So what are you going to do today to take care of yourself? What are you going to say no to? Cause if not, we're going to just keep hitting that cycle of exhaustion and adrenal dysfunction and all the things that come with that stress. Mm-hmm. I, totally resonate with that. I feel like when I have two or three really strong work days, it's usually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, like caffeinated and I check off all my boxes and I'm like, I think I'm up leveling. I like to, I tell myself that I'm, I'm up leveling. I'm becoming this new hyper productive person. And then, you know, Thursday comes this epic crash, right? So you kind of like, you kind of have to be a little bit like looking ahead Mm -hmm. in order to see like, okay, I have to build in some personal time, some recovery time, or else it's going to be another miserable crash like last week. Winter is coming. Exactly. I still have, I still haven't figured it out. I had this big epiphany looking at the moon a couple months ago and I made a shirt about it. It's called phases of the entrepreneur and it's literally all the phases of the moon. And I hate it because we forget you know, we have those full moon days, those crush days, those, wow, like I'm so productive and I'm, it's finally clicking. I finally got it. And then within an hour, a day, a week, we could not feel further from that feeling. We couldn't feel further from our goal. And in that moment, when we are further, like that feeling of, oh my God, what happened to my full moon? I just had my shit together and now I don't. We forget completely that that's the cycle. So when we trust that just like the moon, just like the waves, just like anything in nature, there is this waning and then this waxing and then this waxing and then this waning, you let go of that control and those feelings don't feel so desolate, right? They don't feel so, oh my God, they don't feel so permanent. And that was huge for me is understanding those days are just a blip and the full moon comes back. And so under the moon cycles, it's like, oh no, come back. I need mm-hmm. my nine to five. And then right. full moons, it's like, I'm the shit, <laughs> you know? So it's, <laughs> we all go through it. And I think that was really powerful as far as a visual for me to just say on those good days, like appreciate this. Like you are having a full moon day, Emily, ride this wave. Mm-hmm. But then those on the same term, I have to give myself that grace on those waning days. Like, Hey, this is part of it. It's going to come back. Yeah. Do you journal? Do you track your energy levels, things like that? Like, I know you you talk about, you know, having these really great days, these really down days. Mm-hmm. Do you have an ability to kind of see what your patterns are like? Well, it's interesting. It's very dictated. So I have notebooks and I don't do well. Are you familiar with Gretchen Rubin's tendencies? No. Gretchen Rubin's amazing. So she talks about what's your personality type tendency. So are you an upholder? Are you an obliger? Are you a rebel? Are you a questioner? And it helps you see why you don't fit with certain things. So questioners, if you tell me why, and I believe that why I'm all in upholders, they'll just do anything. Rebels, you tell them to do something and they're out. And that's me. So I have learned the hard way (laughs) why I don't do well with structure and why don't I do well when I know something's going to help. That's just who I am. As soon as someone tells me something, I will do the exact opposite. And so journaling, I have finally found, this is so funny because this recently happened about two years ago, the last 28 years of my life. So I just turned 30 since I could write and I'm a poet. So I write a lot of poetry. I've always wanted to journal. That was something that I went journal to journal to journal to journal. And I would journal for two days, maybe three days at the most four days. And then I would forget about it or I just felt obliged to journal. And then Mm -hmm. I wanted to rebel against it. Like, God, I feel like I should be a journaler journalist, whatever it is. I I should journal. I should write things. And I just never could. It never clicked. And finally, something happened. I found the perfect notebook. It's like free writing. There's no tasks. There's no prompts. There's no dates. It's just an empty journal. It has a fuzzy notebook. So it feels super special for some reason. And I haven't left any place with it. I carry it with me everywhere I go. And something clicked where it was, if you just have it with you and you write down your ideas when you want to. There's no should. There's no force. Do it in the morning. Do it at night. Forget all that. Just do it when you remember. Mm -hmm. And it changed everything. So 
I write, but it is so random and so unstructured, but also so therapeutic because I'm still doing it, but in this weird rebel tendency way. So if there's any rebels that resonate with this, there's hope that you can journal and write, but you just can't put the expectation on myself or I can't put the expectation on myself, but it's really fun to go back. And I have 15 of these stacked up in a bookshelf and I go through and it's so cool because you see my business idea. I just launched a new product. So I see the starts of there needs to be a new product. This is what I want it to look like. This is what I want to draw it. What are the steps to do it? And then six months later, it's in my hands. And so it's this really cool process that you should be doing in some way, whether it's every day on your own schedule, or if you do well with that kind of structure and schedule, doing it every morning. And you can just kind of see from the big picture how far you can come and how much you can get shit done. So that's my form of journaling, if that answered your question. It does. (laughs) And I love it because it's it's very different than a lot of uh, definitely my own journaling style, as well as a lot of my guests. Like I said, I haven't taken that personality assessment, but I know that I'm just such a planner and organizer, you know, and I think you're an upholder. An upholder? Yes, that's my guess. I can see that. <laughs> it's a good thing to be, by the way. Okay. All right. <laughs> They're the best ones. What if I want to be a rebel? <laughs> you don't want to be a rebel. We're a shit show. You and just told me I don't want to be a rebel. makes me want to be a rebel. <laughs> then you might be a rebel. <laughs> it's fun, though, because you just finally realize, what can I do to make myself feel less crazy? right? That's what I want to help my clients with. That's what I want to help myself with. That's what Mm -hmm. I want to help new business owners with. Why do I feel so damn crazy and what's going to work? And just like food and just like fitness, there has to be something that really resonates with the person. And if not, you're just going to go through it and end it and look for the next thing, go through it, end it, look for the next thing. And we're in such a world of privilege and we have such access. Everything is accessible. So if we don't like something and we kind of dabble in it, it's so easy to blame it on that product or blame it on that system and not take that radical accountability for going all in because there's so many choices. And so I think that's, you know, what can I do that helps somebody understand where they're at from scratch because you can't build off of a broken foundation. We can't put a meal plan on somebody when deep down, they don't even think that they're deserving of the life and health that they want. And so it's just a bunch of layers to get through. And that's the coolest part about it is that people might see it as training or nutrition, but it is deep. It is digging. It is an onion, right? It's layers and layers and layers and finding that root for somebody. That's what changes their life. It's never the meal plan. It's never the workout. It's the reminder that they gave themselves or that something triggered some program triggered for them. Like, holy shit, I have all the tools. Like I am that capable Mm -hmm. person. So, and that's something I have to remind myself too. I have all the capability to get my businesses where I want them to be. But if I am too layered and too in my head about it, you just lose out on that so quickly. Yeah, it goes back to, and I know it's one of Tony Robbins' core statements, but also one of my favorite quotes by Viktor Frankl, which is, if you can find a why to live, you can suffer any type of how to live. And I think that that kind of means exactly that, right? Mm, Yeah. If you can really come up with what is your core meaning to why you're doing what you're doing and you can identify and you can just completely like, you know, spiritually hug it. Yeah. Then, you know, everything kind of starts to to come out from that, from that core machine. What is your sentence or two? If you had a sentence or two, it. Of my, of your, my your own? why, yeah. Oof. I know. Put me on the spot. I, know, I thought I was asking the questions today. I think like many of us, it's a, a journey to realize that, you know, love is this eternal reservoir we all have this endless capacity to love. And the first person we need to love is ourselves. And when I feel that I'm in love with myself, the connection to our planet, to my business, to the people I talk with on the show, to my friends and family and to loved ones, it all comes from that. And it it seems to be that is like the oil that lubricates your machine. Any goal you want to achieve, it comes out of a deep love. And I guess the opposite of that is, is fear, fear of failure and fear of not showing up the, you know, the way that you want to be there. 
That's a, that's no, a very that's, good question. That's Emily. great. And a great answer. I was, I'm, <laughs> thank you for letting me put you on the spot. That was beautiful. Oh man, Emily, we could talk for a lot longer. I know we're getting, we're getting towards the end, end of our window Already? today. Dang. I know, I know. But, um, I had a few last questions I wanted to ask you specifically about routines mm -hmm. and your, and your kind of daily habits. We talked a lot about your morning routine and you kind of have a spontaneous free flowing journal. How do you go about planning and dealing with all the logistics for your five, five companies? Yeah. You know, it's similar to like the balance of high days and low days. And so some days I know which company is full focus. Right. And so if we have a launch for something for Evolve Motion, it's full force. And so it's that day is pretty much taken by that. But for the most part, there's about an hour for each company and it's a very big juggling process. But I think not to get too hippie again, before I had the team and before I had the really know-how, I was just kind of creating. And all of a sudden I had these five companies in my hand, young, new, full of potential and beautiful things, but also constantly juggling them, like juggling, juggling, juggling. I don't want to drop the ball. I don't want to drop the ball. And then something really switched. I would say after the gym opened. So we just opened the gym in Rhino, Denver. And it was this moment of clarity of finally having a company in person, in brick and mortar, feeling the energy without having to create it online that I had been doing for years and finally seeing it with my own eyes come to fruition and realizing I didn't have to juggle things anymore. That if the balls dropped, it was meant to drop and that you can have this sense of intuition with each day, what needs to be focused on. And it's a little bizarre to think about it in that way, but it works so well because it's kind of spacing out. You know, you obviously have your team that's, you know, shows up and does their job and helps manage things on the back end and helps with customer support and helps organize events and all the things that are so necessary with them. But at the end of the day, what we can say is, for this month, what are the things that we need to focus on? And we can just go back and forth from there. So it is different every day. That's why I think I am obsessed with my job. It is never really going to be a routine, but the routine comes from how I show up and the routine comes from how I communicate. And so finding again, going back to that morning, going back to like the day to day, what did I do for myself? What did I do to take care of me? Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to the Mind Mill Podcast. If you loved this episode, check out some of the other Mind Mill episodes. They're all free and available at themindmill.com, as well as all major podcasting platforms. Also, please take a moment to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It's incredibly easy and really is the best way to support the show. Stay tuned for more Mind Mill episodes coming down the line. I'll keep them interesting for you, I promise. Take it easy.